there's something else that we can also do with gradients as well. Uh, you might have noticed black and white is fun, but what if we wanted to have something that's a little bit more colorful? In order to customize your gradients, what you're going to have to do is to click on the Edit Gradient button right here. And when you do, you'll see a number of Gradient Editor and a number of different choices in the presets. So we could choose a different sort of style, for example. If I was to use these and click OK, now this is my choice gradient. And that gives us a decidedly different look, depending on what exactly you want it to do. However, you'll also notice that there's one in particular here which indicates a transparency. That's what this checkerboard pattern is. So it's black going to white, but it's a transparent white. So if we were to choose this, for example, and apply it, You'll notice that that original area that was green remained green because there's a transparency on top of what I just did. So even if I was to do this in another direction right now, I'll have black at the bottom, but there'll still be that green from that transparent element. So transparency, as you'll see, is also another useful effect. We'll get into that in due time. But let's say we wanted to create our own color scheme and our own pattern. Well, one thing that we can do is to determine what type of gradient, and we could say solid, that's the most common. Smoothness 100, because we certainly want to have a smooth gradient. Um, and then down here, you can see the color choices, color stop, as it's indicated here. And the top buttons indicate the opacity stop. In other words, what level of opacity does this particular shade of black have? So the opacity can be reduced, and as you can see, that's what brings up the transparent element here. So we can also create our own custom transparency as well. However, I'm just going to change the color. So if I click on one of the bottom areas here, we can change this color to whatever color we want it to be. And right now, we've got a very nice blue to white gradient, and the white area could be changed as well. I could choose maybe a lighter version of this blue. So instead of going to pure white, it actually goes to a very light blue. And right now, we can determine that both of these have transparency at 100%. You'll also notice that when we are um, touching one of these elements, as you can see here, I want to make sure that that's the blue that I wanted it to be. It is. There we go. And um, what I'm going to do is to indicate, of course, that in between these elements, I could introduce uh, another effect. You'll see here that when we look at the gradient, that there is an area right in the middle, and it's called the midpoint. That determines the the amount of color that's coming from where. So if I wanted to increase the amount of dark blue coming in, I would just slide this more to this way, or vice versa. Otherwise, it remains right in the center, which is pretty much uh, the standard. Location can be also introduced numerically, as you can see here. And if we've got that and we in like what we see, Right now, we have that gradient in place, and that's exactly what it's looking like for us. So, that custom gradient can also be saved. We can introduce a new gradient, and as you can see, you can have its name um, to be whatever you want. Now that it's here, it's saved, and every time we want to use that gradient tool, I can just come back here and choose that particular gradient. 